News to at 5. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here with more news tonight on News to at 6. Good night. On World News Tonight, an avalanche at a ski resort in Park City, Utah. A number of skiers are missing. In California, so much water that a dam is in danger of collapsing. In the tsunami zone, our reporter discovers how desperate some people still are for food and water. President Bush talks to ABC's Barbara Walters, second thoughts on some of the things he has said. And our person of the week, plain and simple, he wanted to give the gift of life. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening, everyone. We're going to begin in Utah tonight. There has been an avalanche near the ski resort of Park City, which is about 40 minutes east of Salt Lake City. We are told tonight that as many as 15 people may be buried. They were skiing out of bounds off the main hills. A record number of people have already died from avalanches in Utah this year, and Park City has had nine feet of snow since the end of December. And weather at the time is almost always a factor. Here's ABC's Brian Rooney. The mountains around the Canyon ski area have received as much as nine feet of snow in the past two weeks. It's perfect for deep powder skiers who like the untracked snow outside the boundaries of a ski resort, as shown in these pictures. The avalanche today, just outside the Canyon ski area, was as big as 300 by 1,500 feet, according to witnesses. It is really pretty enormous. It's most of a mountainside that's come down. Um, it looks like, from here, it looks like there's two different break lines, one on the left of a group of trees and one on the right. Ski areas trigger avalanches with explosives under controlled conditions. But the avalanche today was in federally owned backcountry. It's ski at your own risk. A Forest Service avalanche expert says the heavy snows in recent weeks have been building up on top of weaker, unstable layers creating an unusually active avalanche season. What's, hap what's happening right now in this part of northern Utah is the slides are breaking near the ground, and that's causing them to be so much deeper than normal. It's not just the snow from the last two weeks. It's the snow from almost the entire season. Today was a sunny day, which warmed the upper layer of snow and made the avalanche danger greater. Most of the canyon ski area was shut down after the avalanche, so members of the ski patrol and rescuers could swarm the slope in the hope of finding survivors. Brian Rooney, ABC News, Los Angeles. This weather system that has moved from California clear across the Midwest and into the east continues to set records. First, it was the most rain ever in Los Angeles. Now it's the coldest temperatures ever in Minnesota and South Dakota. Here's ABC's Barbara Pinto. In Corona, California today, the roads were flooded with cars. Hundreds of residents forced to evacuate their homes for fear the Prado Dam would give way after more than a foot of rain. You can see the water just gushing out of the Prado Dam. Today, a line of powerful storms churned east, stretching from Maine to Florida. Tornadoes killed two in Georgia overnight. It's all gone. And sliced through Beth Sneed's North Carolina home. And it was quite a shock when I turned that light on and saw that the whole side of the house had been blown out. Torrential rain flooded parts of Virginia and Washington, D.C. In waterlogged Ohio and Illinois, submerged neighborhoods are glazing over. With this ice, you're going to get stuck in any part of this because you don't know where the low levels are. Behind that rain is bitter cold. Here in Chicago, the temperature slid below zero with the wind chill, and the deep freeze quickly made its way east. In New York this morning. And look at this temperature. 66 degrees. By afternoon, the temperature plummeted 30 degrees. In Embarrass, Minnesota, where it was 34 below. Dip this t-shirt in water and hung it up on the railing. Look at that, hard as a rock. Forecasters say this frigid blast is just the beginning. We have an Arctic air mass coming down across the northern Plain states. But notice, we have a second blast of cold air across the Canadian prairies. That will follow in its tracks and move across the Midwest on Sunday. A colder and longer stretch of bitter weather lies ahead. Barbara Pinto, ABC News, Chicago. Other major news today, one of the soldiers at the center of the abuse scandal at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq has been found guilty of all charges today. His name is Specialist Charles Grainer, and here's ABC's John Cochran. 
Military prosecutors convinced the jury that the Army reservist was the ringleader of the abuse. The defense relied heavily on witnesses who said military intelligence ordered Grainer and other military police to soften up prisoners. But on cross-examination, one of the witnesses acknowledged no one ordered Grainer to put naked prisoners in humiliating positions, including a human pyramid. In its closing argument, the prosecution argued that Grainer did it for sport, for fun. The prosecutor adding that a guilty verdict would speak volumes to the world. In France last June, when the president wanted to focus on the 60th anniversary of D-Day, he found himself having to respond to Abu Ghraib. I was humiliated, as was well, most of my country. The, the, those, those soldiers didn't reflect uh, the character of the American people. Three others may soon be tried, including Greener's former girlfriend, Lindy England. She gave birth in October to a son. Attorneys say Greener is the father. John Cochran, ABC News, Washington. In Iraq today, insurgents ambushed a bus carrying members of the Iraqi National Guard west of Baghdad. Iraqi officials tell us tonight that 15 guardsmen were kidnapped. The United Nations said today that two million people need help getting enough food in the wake of the tsunami. The UN says there is enough within the region to meet demand. It is getting it there that is often the nightmare. The U.S. military has, of course, been helping, and today ABC's John Berman went on one of their relief missions in Indonesia. At this airfield in Banda Aceh, U.S. troops are now loading 40 helicopters a day, full of food and water. The flights are going down the west coast of Sumatra to some of the area's hardest hit by the tsunami. The biggest problem right now is that many of the areas along the coast, the road's been washed out, the... Uh, infrastructure has been destroyed so it's just getting access and there are many many different places so logistically it's a very difficult situation there are now 5,000 aid workers in Sumatra getting food and water to at least 300,000 people today we rode along to the town of Lamno 30 miles southwest of Banda Aceh perched on top of a huge pile of supplies the United Nations says that more than half of the 23,000 people who live here have been displaced and are in urgent need of assistance. Back out, back out. As soon as the helicopter landed, it was swarmed. Come on, come on, come on. See People grabbed for everything on board. The two Navy airmen could not hand the supplies out fast enough. We tried to help. Several men leapt on board, clawing at the water bottles, clinging to bags of rice. They were famished. The men did not want to leave. They gulped down water. The pilot lifted off to try to disperse the crowd. Several men still on board. They shook our hands, thanking us for the food. People clamored for supplies tossed from the air. The pilot sat down again. The men were told to leave. This aid flight was over. John Berman, ABC News, Lamno, Indonesia. The Bush administration said today it is going to expand this nation's warning system for tsunamis beyond the Pacific to the Atlantic and the Caribbean. 32 new deep ocean buoys will be deployed that sense motion under the sea. At the moment there are six. The government says the new system will provide almost total detection for any tsunami off the U.S. coast and allow for a response within minutes. When we come back this evening, the White House says the social security system is in crisis. How bad are the numbers really? We'll take a closer look. Barbara Walters interviews the president, and he regrets some of the things he said in his first term. And at the end of the broadcast tonight, our person of the week, a guardian angel. He saved a stranger's life. With Dulcolax laxative, you can relax. It works gently enough for sensitive stomachs, yet provides complete relief. More doctors recommend Dulcolax than any other overnight laxative. Relax. Trust Dulcolax. For overnight relief, guaranteed. I have diabetes, and I test a lot, so I've learned to deal with pain. But now, since I switched to Freestyle Flash, testing is virtually pain-free. Virtually pain-free. Freestyle Flash uses the smallest sample of blood. 50 to 90 percent less than most meters and freestyle flash is the smallest meter in the world if you have diabetes why use any other meter when freestyle flash is virtually pain-free 
I knew women lose bone mass, but who knew it could start as early as our 30s? I'm already 34, so I switched to One A Day Women's. One A Day Women's is a complete multivitamin with more than twice the calcium of Centrum. I need to stay strong. One A Day Women's. Sometimes all the right moves can't give high cholesterol the slip. If you're at risk and diet and exercise aren't enough, adding Lipitor can help lower your bad cholesterol 39 to 60 percent. And Lipitor has proven benefits for your heart. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking or if you experience muscle pain or weakness as they may be a sign of a serious side effect. So take the next step. Ask your doctor about the benefits of Lipitor. We're going to take a closer look tonight at the debate about fixing Social Security. The president launched a campaign this week to sell Americans on an urgent need for changing the retirement program. A White House email said the public must be convinced, quote, that the system is heading for an iceberg. Longer life expectancy and baby boomers retiring are certainly going to strain the system. But the White House has painted a very scary picture this week. We asked ABC's Betsy Stark to investigate whether the urgency is justified. The president has been telling 20-somethings that by the time they retire, Social Security will be broke. I want you to think about a Social Security system that will be flat bust bankrupt unless the United States Congress has got the willingness to act now. The fact is, Social Security is not going broke. Not in the sense that there will be no money for 20-year-olds or even 2-year-olds when they retire. If we do nothing, the system can deliver full benefits through the year 2042. That's according to the Social Security Administration. And after 2042, according to the Social Security Administration? Even if we do nothing, after 2042, we will have enough money coming in to pay about three quarters of promised benefits. A system that will only pay three quarters of its promises is still a system that needs to be fixed, especially since the government relies on Social Security to pay other budget bills, from baggage screeners to park rangers. As Mr. Bush tells it, the size of the problem is cause for alarm. You realize that the system of ours is going to be uh, short, the difference between obligations and money coming in, by about $11 trillion unless we act. $11 trillion is a scary number, but probably not a realistic one. It's an estimate of the shortfall that would occur if the government did nothing to fix Social Security between now and the end of time. But while the Bush administration portrays a crisis, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says the problem is manageable. Social Security is very fixable. Uh, there is a large menu of choices that would bring benefits into alignment with revenues. The trustees of Social Security calculate that by raising payroll taxes on workers and employers, 1% each, the system could pay all its benefits for the next 75 years. The president, of course, has said he will not raise taxes to fix Social Security, which probably means the White House will propose some cut in benefits. Peter. Many thanks, Betsy. This is a debate that is going to go on for some weeks, if not months. For more on this, there is an opportunity, by the way, to read all the details on both sides. You can go to abcnews.com. When we come back this evening, Barbara Walters talks to President Bush. He tells Barbara that he could have been more careful when he said some things. This year on our weekend away, Jane and I wanted adventure. I didn't want my asthma to hold me back. Bye. You wanna go where you wanna go. Do what you want. What if you could help prevent asthma symptoms before they start? Singulair. It's a once-a-day tablet that helps provide effective 24-hour asthma control. It's not a steroid. And the same Singulair is also approved to help relieve a broad range of seasonal allergy symptoms. Singular will not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Continue taking your other asthma medicines unless your doctor tells you to stop or change the dose. 
If asthma symptoms get worse, contact your doctor at once. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age and may include headache, ear infection, sore throat, and upper respiratory infection. Ask your doctor about once a day Singulair and help prevent asthma symptoms before they start. Having diabetes can mean testing your blood several times a day. But all those little drops add up to a healthier life. With the Essentia Breeze Meter from Bayer, you get 10 accurate tests from just one Essentia Auto Disc. And that helps make it all a lot easier. I want to return this duck. Why? It's very annoying. It just says the same thing over and over again. Go ahead, say it. Say it. Just one, say it. I just... Ah! What? What about him? If you're hurt and can't work, you get cash for bills, rent, food from Aflac. Huh? Okay. Aflac. If you're hurt and can't work, you this get is cash much for better. Bills. At least I learned something. I'm so glad we ordered. Hi. You know? Sorry. Oh, hi. Want a bite? No thanks. Hmm? It looks great, but I'm thinking. I'll take that. No, no, maybe that. Don't just watch calories with Special K. Get whole grain total and watch nutrition too. 100 calories plus 100% of 12 vitamins and minerals. 100 calories, 100% nutrition. Marry two kids. Don't bother. Next time a cold wears you down, pick up Alka-Seltzer Plus. With a burst of effervescence, Alka-Seltzer Plus is instantly ready to break up your worst cold symptoms fast. So you're not just relieved, you feel revived. Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold. One day, mothers taking their baby's health into their own hands. She wasn't tolerating whole milk, and we just had to make a change. The benefits and risks of sharing breast milk, a report no parent should miss. Monday on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Overseas today, the government of North Korea said it would return to international talks about its nuclear programs. The North Koreans also said they would treat the United States as a friend as long as Washington does not slander their leader, Kim Jong-il. In the past, North Korea has said that a hostile U.S. policy is the main stumbling block to negotiations. They're still going to have parades. We're going to spend a fair amount of time next week looking at President Bush's record and his aspirations for a second term. Second inauguration is next Thursday. The President took some time at the White House this week to look back, and he did it with ABC's Barbara Walters. President Bush, as you begin this term, what three words most describe your state of mind? Excited, hopeful, and appreciative. Mm -hmm. Excited about the opportunities that lie ahead, hopeful we'll achieve peace, and appreciative to have a chance to lead the country for four more years. Is there something important that you learned your first four years that you will do differently now? Uh, watch what I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. Okay. <laughs> but I do think, uh, you know, when I, I said some things in the first term, um, they're probably a little blunt. Bring it on was a little blunt. And uh, uh, I, I was really speaking to, the, to our troops, but it came out and, and it had a different, uh, different connotation, different meanings for others. And, and uh, so I've got to, I'll, be, I'll be more disciplined in how I say things. You know, I, I remember when I talked about Osama bin Laden, I said, we're going to get him dead or alive. I guess it's not the most diplomatic of language. Laura, as a matter of fact, chewed me out right after that. Uh -huh. uh, so I, 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 I do have to be cautious about, you know, conveying thoughts in, in, in a way maybe that doesn't send wrong impressions about our country. Well, let's talk about Iraq. It seems we're in a catch-22. It is important for America to stay in Iraq to train the military. On the other hand, it is America staying in Iraq that seems to excite and exacerbate the extremists. Well, actually, we have to stay to train Iraqis so they can get rid of them. I readily concede that the only way that the terrorists will be defeated or the thugs will be defeated is for the Iraqis to defeat them. What do you hope that your legacy will be? You've got four years, and I know I'm asking a, a down-the-line question, but what do you hope it will be? Well, one piece. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, 50 years from now, people look back and say, thank goodness old George W. stuck to his belief that freedom 
uh, is, um, is, is, a, is an agent for change to make the world more peaceful and that all people deserve to be free. There will be more Barbara Walters with the president and Mrs. Bush later this evening on 2020. When we come back this evening, spending $100,000 to save someone he did not know, our person of the week. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and Person of the Week. Brought to you by Walmart. I started with Walmart 18 years ago as an unloader and receiving. I started in the baby department and I am store manager today. Walmart is a career. It's not just a job. Good quality of life, uh, good educational opportunities for my children. We never imagined that we would be doing what we're doing today. Now, our son John has started at Walmart. He wants to be a pharmacist. No one knows better than we do that he has a bright future. We truly are living the American dream. It's out there and uh, it's at Walmart. When stuffy sinus or colds trigger post-nasal drip, you can get a sore throat. The new Acepapol lozenge relieves sore throat from post-nasal drip. Pain is gone. Nasal passages feel cooler. <sighs> new Acepapol lozenges for sore throat from post-nasal drip. Cholesterol. It comes grilled, fried, slow cooked, twice baked, poached and pureed. But it also comes from mom, dad, grandma Ethel, and grandpa Sam. Your cholesterol doesn't just come from food. It also has a lot to do with family history. Today, there's Vitorin. When diet and exercise aren't enough, adding Vitorin can help. Vitorin is a new product that treats the two sources of cholesterol. Cholesterol from food and the cholesterol your body makes naturally based on family history. Vitorin lowers bad cholesterol 45 to 60 percent. Vitorin is not for everyone, including people with liver problems, women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Unexplained muscle pain or weakness could be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Vitorin may interact with other medicines or certain foods, increasing your risk of getting a serious side effect. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Ask your doctor about new Vitorin. Your cholesterol comes from two sources. Treat them both with Vitorin. Yo, yes, you're excited. Mm. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking plentiful. You've never seen anything like it before. It has wholesome grains, real beef, even carrots and peas. So there's carbohydrates for energy and protein for those serious muscles. Oh. And you even get some vegetables. So happy. <laughs> Love it so much you only think you're getting spoiled. Yes, you do. <laughs> but it's good for you, too. Healthful. Flavorful. Beneful. Beneful brand by Purina. You know about Allegra, but you should know about Allegra D. It just may be music to your ears. Ask your doctor about Allegra D. You need to know about it. Sunday, the gloves are off. Why have I been taking off this case? Pretend you have a clue. And the war is on. Who will be the first to go down? We're letting you go. Candace Bergen joins Boston Legal all new this Sunday, 10, 9 central, only on ABC. Saturday, Good Morning America takes you behind the scenes of the unprecedented security for the upcoming presidential inauguration. Plus, the lowdown on the new cholesterol-lowering drug that the FDA may make available over the counter. Don't miss Good Morning America Saturday. Finally this evening, our person of the week. If you have watched this last segment on a Friday night with any regularity, you know that over the months and years, we have chosen people from all walks of life for all sorts of reasons. But every so often, someone pops up on the radar who is simply irresistible because they reinforce our faith in human nature. Or as President Lincoln once put it, the better angels of our nature. I am not a very wealthy guy. I'm comfortably off. Um, I got this thing in my life, you know, you know, you only can use, you know, one car, you can only use one kitchen, you can only use one bathroom, you can only eat so much and drink so much. So that's my theory in life. I mean, what more do we need? Danny, you like the Guinness, don't you? Jerry Quinn lives in Boston. He's 52 years old. He owns a bar and a restaurant. How is it? Good? And last Monday, as he does most days, he settled down to lunch and the newspaper. All of a sudden, I seen this article in the paper and it was a regard somebody needed funds for a transplant. He would, you know, pretty much be in a wheelchair in a year if he didn't get some help. And I started to make me think. I said, you know, I'd really love to help this guy.
The guy in question is Franklin Piedra. He is 33 years old. He had arrived in New York from Ecuador 10 years ago and has been suffering from chronic kidney failure ever since. When he got sick, the restaurant where he worked let him go. Since then, he has shine shoes for a living on Wall Street. Franklin is a viable candidate for an organ transplant and his mother wants to give him a kidney. But he has no health insurance and a transplant costs about $100,000. Morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Franklin wrote to the government asking for help. They didn't even write back. He contacted the Ecuadorian consulate in New York. Basically, he says, they suggested he go back and die in Ecuador. Jerry Quinn had another idea. Well, the first thing that came to me was the condominium downtown. Jerry's been saving for a new place to live. He was about to put a major down payment on a two-bedroom apartment in the heart of Boston. Riverview and all. And then he thought... You know what? I think I can do without the water views and use that money uh, to help this gentleman, Franklin. Jerry called the reporter at the New York Post who had written the story. She had said to me, um, you know, how much did I want to donate? And uh, I turned around and I said to her... Uh, I'd like to do the whole thing. And she said, are you serious? And I said, yeah, I'd like to do the whole thing. Pretty soon, Jerry Quinn was in New York to meet Franklin Piedra. He'd already sent the money. He came into the room, and I felt a little funny. I, I was just nervous a little bit myself. He put his arms around and me, and he hugged me. And uh, he said, you're wonderful. And there was tears in his eyes. His eyes filled up, and he said to me, you're my angel. And I said, thank you. And I could feel shivers going through my back. He's my angel I have in my heart all in my life, you know. A gift from one immigrant to another. Jerry Quinn was born in Ireland. His father was a farmer. When he was 22, he came to the U.S. on vacation, and he never went home. Hi, guys. He has a very strong sense of community. How you doing? You hungry? For the last four years, Jerry has cooked and delivered dinner to kids at a nearby school who are not getting all the nutrients they need. And this is Jerry at Christmas when he invites anyone in need to come in and join him for a meal. Hello, Franklin. How are you doing today? Ah, very well, very well, thank you. If sir. all goes well, Franklin Piedra will get his new kidney this month. And after that, he says he's going to work harder on his English because now he has a future. As for Jerry Quinn, most of all, he seems genuinely pleased, in a modest sort of way, that he could make a difference. He said, you know, when I get on my feet, and when I'm, you know, pretty more established and, and, and have the operation over me, he said, I actually want to help people too, just like what you were doing for me. And that made me really feel good. And so we choose Jerry Quinn. What more can you say about a man that he is a good citizen? He says he'd be there for the operation. He doesn't want Franklin Piedra to be alone. That is our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Have a good weekend. Good night. Tonight, the president, the first lady, Barbara Walters returns to 2020 for their first interview since the election. Personal, political, provocative. From the war... Mr. President, was it worth it? ...to the future, a 2020 exclusive tonight. News 2 at 6 starts now. And good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Newell. And I'm Ann Holt. A sudden change in plans for Iraqi voting here in Nashville. Thousands of Iraqi expatriates will now report to the state fairgrounds. News 2's Melissa Penry is here with some late-breaking information. Melissa? Well, Anne, officials running the Iraqi election here in Nashville say they were notified just an hour ago that the state fairgrounds will be the new staging area. They have to work fast to set up everything and get out the word to 16,000 potential Iraqi voters from all across the southeast. All day long, contractors have been out at Whitfield Park along Edmondson Pike, setting up flooring for tents, all in preparation to turn this city park into the gathering place for any Iraqi expatriate who wishes to vote in the upcoming election. They were to report here next week to be bused to a second location to register, then do it again at the end of the month to actually vote. 
but the Metro Councilman who represents the district had concerns about heavy traffic and safety for the surrounding neighborhoods. My concerns are not overblown if the people who are organizing the event are themselves having uh, off-duty Metro Police officers there, are encouraging people not to bring handbags and backpacks and the like, and we both know why that is. Again, this afternoon, Metro...